Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Vessalatu vesselam Ala seyyidil mürselin Seyyidi ve habibina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem teslimin kethira Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ve berkatuhu So alhamdulillah this is a pre-Ramadan a presentation if you will So we want to start with a the more technical matters because as Ramadan and the fast of Ramadan is an act of worship there are certain rulings so before getting into the philosophy if we uh, fall short inshallah we would have gotten into the rulings which are more important in the sense that they're the foundation of the acceptability of the action so uh, the uh, word Psalm Psalm is, which is Psalm Ramadan or Siyam Ramadan. It means in the Arabic language to refrain from something. Al Imsaqu an shay to refrain from something. So it could be linguistically, it could be speech. So in the Quran, for example, Maryam alayhi salam, she mentions, Inni nadartu li rahmani sawma. So I've taken an oath to the most merciful that I will refrain. Yani she will refrain from speech. So linguistically, the word means to refrain. And in terms of uh, shara'an, what it means in our religion, religiously, is to refrain from those things which will break the fast from the crack of dawn to the setting of the sun with an intention. So in Arabic would be al-imsaqu an mufattirat min tul'i al-fajri ila ghurub al-shamsi ma'aniya. So refraining from those things that will break the fast from the crack of dawn until the setting of the sun with an intention. So our intention is to fast this day of Ramadan. Uh, so that's the meaning of the psalm. And the designated month for the obligatory fast is Ramadan. And Ramadan comes from the uh, w meaning to burn off. So the burning sand is called Ramda. So in Ramadan we burn off, not necessarily calories, we burn off sins, inshallah. Some people, they pick up a few pounds in Ramadan. <laughs> MashaAllah, they have the, the nice iftars. Uh, so the, the ruling concerning one who rejects the incumbency of Ramadan, so hukmu tarikil wujub, or hukmu tariku wujubi siyami Ramadan. One who rejects the incumbency, a believer who says, I'm a Muslim, but I don't have to fast, you don't have to fast. It's what's in your heart. That person will be labeled a disbeliever, a kafir. So it's kufr to deny the incumbency. One who uh, doesn't fast. I know I'm supposed to fast, but I'm too lazy. We have to get up like 3.30 in the morning. I just can't do it. Then that person is a fasiq. This is a profligate. But they're not a kafir. So denying the incumbency of fasting it's kufr. We don't have to fast. That's old-fashioned. Old it's really what's in your heart that's important. It's kufr. But I know I'm supposed to fast. We're supposed to fast. This is Ramadan. I'm a Muslim, but I just can't do it. Or I just don't feel like it. Or I got to go to work and, and air condition. You know, I know I should. It's fasik, fisk. Without an excuse. بِدُونَ الْعُذْرِ بِلَا عُذْرِ is fasik. Taban, one who leaves fasting with an excuse, and we'll get into that, is uh, not guilty of any sin whatsoever. So the person leaves the fasting without denying its incumbency, remains a believer, but they're a fasik and they're athim. They're guilty of a sin, a grave sin. 
And in an Islamic order, that person would be locked up during the day and denied food. So, to save their soul from perdition. So, just mention that. Some people would say it's harsh, but the fire of hell is harsher. So, you know, go, <laughs> come with us. Okay, we'll let you out at night. You could eat all night. Uh, so that's the ruling. So the ruling is, is wajib, incumbent upon one who is a believer and does not have an excuse, a valid excuse. Tayyip, if one has an, a valid excuse, which we'll come to, that person does not have to fast. Now, uh, how is the uh, month, uh, the beginning of the month acknowledged? So this is a second issue, a third issue. It's, it's acknowledged by confirming the sighting of the new crescent moon, the physical sighting of the new crescent moon. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi fin gum alaykum fa akmilu iddata sha'ban thalathina yawman. So fast based on its vision, its sighting. Sumu li ru'yatihi. Fama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sumu li hisabihi. Fast based on its calculation. Qala sumu li ru'yatihi. Fast based on its sighting. وَأَفْطِرُوا لِرُؤْيَتِهِ And break your fast based on its sighting. So, it's very important for us to sight the moon. So that's why Ibrahim and uh, Isa and Ibrahim and others go out and look for the moon. So they see the moon, they have eagle eyes. There it is. Darshi blows off the starboard bow. That's if you're on a ship. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's how the Muslims, the overwhelming majority of Muslims historically have understood uh, the commandment of the Prophet ﷺ. So these are imperatives. Sumu fil amr. Wa aftiru fil amr. So fast. Biru'yatihi wa aftiru biru'yatihi. That's how it's been understood. And people say, you know, uh, we're not sure. That's the whole point. Like, if we calculate, we can be absolutely sure. So, why do we want to be absolutely sure? So we can establish our schedules. It's just the, the egotism of the human being. We want to be in control, and we don't want God to be in control. And because of God's in control, we don't know when it might be. It could be today, tomorrow. I'll be embarrassed at work. When's your holiday? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be today, maybe tomorrow. I'm not sure. So we want to be in control. It's going to be tomorrow because we calculated it out. So the whole point is that we want to preserve a realm, an area in our lives where God is in control. We want to preserve uh, areas in our lives where the unseen is a, is a reality. Now with cell phones, you know, someone's halfway around the world, we don't know what's happening with them. Now we can follow every minute, we text, you all right? We can text them, find out it's okay. You're in Egypt, you're not crying, are you? <laughs> we, want to, we want to be in control. That's the, the Pharaonic impulse within the human being. So we don't want to leave anything into the realm of God's control. Even though we say we're theist. Wallahu al -musta'an. In any case, so uh, concerning starting and ending the fast, a person <clears throat> who's in a country and they start fasting and then they go to a, another place where they're ending their fast a day early, they should end their fast with those people and then fast an extra day after Eid to make up. Or vice versa. They're in a, fa a place where 
they're fasting, they started their fast, they go to a place and they're still fasting, they should fast the extra day and consider the extra day nafil, to break with the people that they settle in. And this is just to establish social order, to establish order. And to give uh, precedent to the community that one finds oneself in. So you're here a visitor and the people start fasting, you should fast with the people. Even though back home they're doing something else. And this is why we have chaos and anarchy. We don't have chaos and anarchy because of the moon sighting. We have chaos and anarchy because everyone in this country who came from another country want to do what they're doing back home. So my people in Saudi Arabia are fasting today. Or well, my people in Turkey, they're not fasting today. My people in Egypt, yani, <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. So, and my people in Morocco, they always follow the moon, so they're not fasting till tomorrow. And my people in Pakistan, same thing. And, and so we have total chaos. And then because of that chaos, we say we need to have hisab. We need to calculate. Well, all we need to do is just agree with each other here. As opposed to what they're doing back home that we left 30 years ago. <laughs> because of the chaos. So we bring the chaos here. <laughs> We're homesick. There's not enough chaos, you know. So you, one should fast with the people of, of their... Of their uh, Locale. None. Uh, the, the excuses, the azar, that would prevent one from fasting, there are, there are mandatory excuses. One mandatory excuse is the monthly cycle for the woman. So she can't fast. So she breaks her fast obligatorily. And then she makes up those days, however many days she might miss. Uh, but does not pay any fidya, doesn't feed a poor person, just makes up the days that are missed. Then there's the uh, one who sleeps or is unconscious for the entirety of the day. That person has to make up that day. So if someone says, you know, it's hot, it's a heat wave, so I'm going to just sleep all day and then wake up after Maghrib and eat. You have to make that day up. Wajib is wajib to make up that day. So even if one wakes up for a moment, so you wake up, and Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar for Maghrib, then your fast is accepted. But if you sleep the entirety of the day, that fast isn't accepted. A person has to make that up. Uh, a person who has a severe injury, uh, ailment that's going to cause uh, harm to themselves or they have, is going to cause severe pain or it's going to cause extreme discomfort. That person can, they're not, they don't have to break their fast obligatorily, they can bear the pain. They can bear the discomfort, etc. But they have a license to break their fast and there's no sin, no harm uh, in doing that. So the religion is not trying to uh, torture us. Yuridullahu bikum al yusr, wa la yuridu bikum al asr. Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want difficulty. But that person doesn't have to break their fast. They say, you know, it's Ramadan. I'm fast. I'm just going to tough it out. They can do that. But if they choose to break their fast, they make up the day uh, later. The person who's on a long journey, that's a distance where they could shorten their prayer. So not just I'm traveling, but they're traveling a distance that will allow them to shorten their prayer about 60 American miles, 48 Hashimi miles, about 90 kilometers. That person can break their fast if they start their travel before the time of the fast comes in. It's a very important caveat. If they start the day fasting, so they get up, they have the suhoor, they start fasting, 
And then at nine o'clock, they have a flight to Chicago. They say, I'm traveling today. I'm breaking my fast. That person cannot break their fast. They have to be traveling from the beginning of the fasting period and not a person who starts fasting during the time of the fast. So we should be clear on that. There's a little caveat that some people miss. So I'm traveling, so I'm going to break today. Well, your flight isn't until 9 in the morning. You've already started fasting, or you should be fasting. So a long journey, that's also a journey that's not for haram. So they're not going, you know, for example, to uh, write a contract to sell beer in their store or something. So that will be a trip that's for haram. It has to be a trip for something lawful, and the trip has to start before the day of fasting. Uh, another person who can break their fast is the one who is incapable of fasting because of old age, by way of example, or general weakness or debilitation, that person also can break their fast. And of course they can fast if they can bear it. So those are the excuses, the general excuses. Now the niya, the niya, the intention with the shafis is has three basic conditions. One is called tabyit, which isn't a condition with the, uh, 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 the Hanafis. So tabyit, the niyyah has to be made the night before the day of fasting. So if one waits until after Fajr, then their niyyah has been made too late. They have to make up that day. Because they didn't start the day fasting with niya in the man ma'amalu bin niyat. So they didn't start the day fasting with niya. The reason they can do it at night is because, for example, with the prayer, they start the niya right with the takbir. Or with the hajj, right with the ihram. But no person can determine the exact moment that fajr comes in. Say, like, okay, five, four, Three, two, one. Make your knee. Hurry up, knee. So, because of the impossibility of determining with exact precision the moment Fajr comes in, any time the night before is sufficient. The uh, Hanafi say you have until noontime to make the niya. So, if you forget, uh, then make your niya during the first part of the day on the basis of the Hanafi opinion. So, that's the first. Condition, tabiit and niya, to say it, wa anta fil mabit, you're in your house at night. The bata is to spend the night. A ta'yin, to specify this, the day that one is fasting, the way to siyama, gadin, yawman min Ramadan, hadhal am. So I intend to pray fast tomorrow as a day of Ramadan this year. So, so it's not making up for na last year. It's not a general fast. It's the fast of Ramadan. That's my intention. So one should have ta'yin specify, specifying uh, the niya. And then takrar. Takrar, one should repeat the niya every night. Because each day of fasting is an individual act of worship. If you miss one day, you don't make the whole month up. You make the day you missed up which indicates each day is an individual act of worship. Uh, there are some opinions one makes the niya at the beginning of the month, and that suffices for the entire month. But the more accurate opinion is that each day is an individual act of worship. Therefore, each day should be covered by an individual intention. So those are the three uh, basic conditions of the intention. And the shafi'iya. So... Uh, should be repeated, takrar, there should be ta'yin and tabit. So it should be made at night before the fasting day starts. It should be made, uh, the day of fasting should be specified and then it should be repeated for each individual day. So that's the, the niya. The next issue is the mufattirat, those things that break the fast. So mufattirat al-akli wa shurb. Aklu wa shurb. 
food and drink break the fast. So if I'm, it's Ramadan and I drink even this little bitty cup of water, that's it, my fast is broken. So one should uh, refrain from food and drink. Also, uh, secondly, the, they say, Wusul Aynin ila al Jauf min manfadin maftuh. So anything entering your body cavity through an opening in the body. So the body cavity is the cranial cavity and the, what would you call it, thoracic cavity, medical people. That's it? Allahu Akbar. The thoracic cavity. So anything that goes beyond the throat, be that, is not even food. Uh, you swallowed a pea or a rock, an uncooked pea or a rock that goes in, that, that would break the fast. Water in your ears, so you, you're on the swim team, and you diligently closing your mouth and printing your nose, and water goes in your ear and to your head. That would break your fast, because uh, the ears are considered manthadin maftuh. So you should refrain from swimming in Ramadan. Because if the ears don't get it, the nose is going to get it. That's manfad maftur. If the nose don't get it, the mouth is going to get it. So that would break the fast. Now if you have to save someone, dive in the water and save them, make the day up. Say, well, I can't swim, it's Ramadan. No, please, save the person, make the day up. Now, um, uh, also, uh, uh, smoke. Now, the, most of the ulama, this is a, a fatwa that <clears throat> you'll find, if you intentionally expose yourself to smoke, it breaks your fast because the smoke is an ayn. Ayn ma tara ma tarahu bil ayn. An ayn is something you see with your eye. So it's something tangible that you see, so you can see smoke. So you shouldn't fill the masjid up with incense in Ramadan, you know, it's Juma, we're gonna get our best rood. And people come in, they're all breaking their fast. So, but if you unintentionally, because there's situations we can't control, and that would be umum uh, al-balwa. So, the bus comes, you're in Damascus or Cairo, and the old bus comes by, and we used to call them crop dusters. And dust, brrrr, and brrrr. you can't control that, but you're breathing that diesel smoke. So that's an ayn, and is entering manfad maftuh, your nose, your mouth, and is getting into your, your body cavity, but it's beyond your control. So intentionally exposing yourself to smoke. You light the incense purposely. You see the room is filled with incense and you, you don't have to go in, but you go in anyway, you have a meeting. That will break the fast. Unintentional, a old vehicle comes by and bombs you with smoke or something uh, spontaneously starts burning beyond your control. Uh, most would say that doesn't break your fast because the exposure is unintentional and in some instances is, it would be an extreme hardship to avoid it. So, umum al-balwa. Qul hadha qayya mufattir. Tayyip. Intentionally vomiting. If you intentionally vomit, it breaks the fast. If you vomit due to uh, uh, uncontrollable nausea, it wouldn't break your fast. But if you force yourself to vomit, uh, most scholars consider that something that would break the fast. If it's not intentional, it wouldn't break the fast. Uh, engaging in sexual intercourse during the day in Ramadan would break the fast. And we'll talk about the kafara for that uh, shortly. I mentioned uh, previously the haid, the a menstrual cycle for the woman or the postnatal bleeding, the nifas would break the fast and those days missed during that time would have to be made up. Also, uh, we mentioned 
uh, sleeping the entirety of the day, being afflicted with uh, insanity because one would lose their aql. One of the conditions for the soundness of the fast is aql, balik al aql, a person who's reached the age of pu puberty, a person who is in control of their senses, so being knocked unconscious, someone comes and talks you over the head, or it's an accident. You, in your joy, Ramadan is here, boom, you walk into the window and you faint and you lose your consciousness, that will break your fast. Uh, and you have to make up that day. So those are some of the things that break the fast. So the next issue are uh, the adab of the fast. So these are the things that don't break the fast, but one should try strenuously to do them because they, they complete and enrich the fast. So we don't want to just fast in a legal sense. We want to have a rich and beneficial fast. So one of the uh, etiquettes of the fast is hastening to break the fast once one has confirmed that the sun is going down. So not just as soon as you hear the adhan or the clock says it's 8.30, so we can break now. You make sure, go look at the sun, make sure it's down. But once you're sure it's down, you should hasten to break the fast. Because Ramadan is not a toughness contest. Uh, I'll break at 11 o'clock because I'm tough like that. I don't have to eat right now. No, it's not about how tough you are. It's about following the orders that we've been given by our Lord. So who can be the most scrupulous? So he says, when you, the sun sets, break. I'm breaking as soon as I know the sun is set. Because it's about obeying Allah, not being a tough guy. I'll skip iftar tonight. No, it's sunnah to take the iftar and it's sunnah to hasten the iftar. Then, uh, uh, actually, it's, it's obligatory to take the iftar at some time, but it's sunnah to, to hasten it. The sahur. So it's, it's obligatory because we saw uh, continuous fasting has been forbidden. Sahur, the pre-dawn meal, is from the etiquette of the fast. Again, we should make sure we get up. Some people, well, I'll eat a big iftar and then I'll sleep right to the end of Fajr. But that's not observing the etiquettes of the fast. The sahur, also some people skip it because, you know, I'm trying to lose weight this Ramadan. It's a great opportunity. The worst thing you can do if you're trying to lose weight is to skip breakfast. Sumo wrestlers don't eat breakfast. So they can gain weight. When you skip breakfast, your metabolism slows down. Your body goes into starvation mode. So whatever's there, the body shuts down to preserve. And so it slows the metabolism down and the slow metabolism helps you to retain whatever you've eaten. So the worst thing you can do if you're trying to lose weight is to skip breakfast. When you eat breakfast, your body and metabolism picks up because we've been programmed to work in the morning. From dusk, from dawn to dusk. And so the body wants that fuel to fuel up in the morning. So it, and so it can burn that throughout the day. When it doesn't get that fuel in the morning, the metabolism slows down to preserve what fuel is left over from the, from the previous day. So it's not only against the uh, etiquette of the fast to skip the sahur, it's also bad if you're trying to lose weight. So man, I skipped sahur all Ramadan and I gained 10 pounds. <laughs> you became a sumo wrestler. So, and then to delay the suhoor as late as possible. So nowadays, one should, Yani, say if today was Ramadan, so Fajr comes in around 4.25, and one should be done by four o'clock. One shouldn't be done by like 3.30, one should delay it as late as one can. That's from the etiquette of the fast. Again, because we're not trying to be tough, we're not trying to lose weight, we're trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and walk in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
that you gain more taqwa. That's what Ramadan is all about. And taqwa is imtithal al-awamir, which tinab al-nawahi is implementing the commandments and avoiding the prohibitions. Then the next level where these things come in, yani, uh, imtithal al-mustahabbat, which tinab al-makruhat. So is implementing those things that are desirable and avoiding those things that are disliked. There's a higher level of taqwa. And then a higher level, yani, ijtinab ma la ba'sa bihi khawfan mimma bihi ba's. Avoiding that which is okay, fearing that it might lead to something that's not okay. It's the highest level, it's called wara. Tayyip. So, Allahumma salli rasulillah. So, those are the things that well, we were in the adab. So, hastening to break the fast, delaying the suhoor, sahur, uh, <clears throat> uh, leaving off uh, inappropriate speech. We should be careful with our speech in Ramadan. So, whoever avoids food and drink, but doesn't refrain from foul speech, then Allah has no need that they give up their food and their drink. Or, so we should, we should be very, very careful in guarding our speech in Ramadan. So when we're normally very combative, you know, someone gets in my face, I'm getting in their face. I ain't backing down. I don't back down to anybody. They insult me, I'm going to insult them ten times worse. Because I just got to slice them up. I'm like the ninja Muslim. Chop, 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 chop. And slice them and dice them and then leave them for road kill in the road. In Ramadan, please don't be ninja Muslim. Don't slice, don't dice, don't leave people for road kill. Just zip it. Then you say, in Nisa'im. In Nisa'im. Asalam Junna. So fasting is a shield. Use the shield of fasting to ward off their insults and abuse. Don't respond in kind. So one should be very diligent in guarding their speech. Uh, if, if one has entered into a state of major ritual impurity, one should make ghusl before fajr. So it's permissible to make ghusl after fajr, but one should try to start the day fasting in a state of ritualistic purity. Uh, one should make dua when one breaks one one's fast. Allahumma bika amantu laka sumtu ala rizqika aftartu. And or whatever uh, one is memorized from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And also should make general prayer for every time, uh, for whatever you want. Because this is one of the times that the prayers are answered. And al iftar waqt al istijaba. Like the, the iftar is a time that the prayers are answered. And the time one should seek an answer to one's prayer. So it's a time one should pray for Muslims and people in general, pray for this country, pray for the people in Egypt and elsewhere in Syria, pray for peace, pray for your family's well being. This is a, a time of dua and is from the adab of the prayer to make dua at this time. Taftir uh, as saim Giving people something to break their fast with is from the adab of the prayer. So give people dates, something to break fast with. Now the elaborate iftars are not from the spirit of the fast. If you invite people to fulfill the sunnah of taftir, it's great. But don't have your wife in the kitchen all day, toiling and sweating, smelling food. <laughs> Just don't wait for Ramadan to have her make your special best busa. Yalla salma, yani al ikhwa, yatun fa nahtaj al best busa khasa. No. Just give them a simple meal. Doesn't take long to prepare. It's Ramadan, that's the spirit, right? We're empathizing with the poor people. Inside the poor people, you got to spread like from here to there with the special best busa and the special Ramadan maqlubah and the special Ramadan mansaf 
and the special Ramadan Halim and the special Ramadan Biryani. I don't want the regular biryani. I want the Ramadan special. Brothers are coming and we need the Ramadan special. No. Wait for the Eid special. Like Eid, we eat on Eid. It's almost English, eat. Yani, <laughs> eat Mubarak. <laughs> but during Ramadan is fasting time, not eating time. So it's good iftar, taftir, give people some dates. Here's to break your fast with. You fulfill the sunnah. Give them you know, a simple meal. Then when they complain, say, did you read your juice today? Go read your Quran. <laughs> They're like, waiting, that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're empathizing with the poor people. <laughs> that's all you get. <laughs> And one should assist, like the married brother should assist the, the, the women to get some sweetness from Ramadan. Not make Ramadan the month of being in the kitchen, toiling, to host all these elaborate iftars. Yani, say, listen, we'll have the iftar, I'll make the peanut butter sandwiches, you go read your Quran. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Someone complains, we're empathizing with the poor people. The, They'll, they'll leave you alone. But it is, in all seriousness, it's from the, uh, the adab of the fast to give people something to break their fast with. Uh, the next issue, the issue of qada, making a uh, misfast. So the musafir and marid, <coughs> the, the traveler and the sick person, they make up the day. And that's it. So every day they miss due to travel or due to sickness or illness, they make that day up uh, at a later time. But they should not delay until the next Ramadan. If they delay until the next Ramadan, then they, so they don't make the day up and the next Ramadan comes. Then they have to make the day up and they have to feed a poor person for every day they missed. And if they miss year after year, they have to feed for the second year two poor, poor people, and the third for every day, three poor people, and, and so and so. So one should strive uh, to make up days they miss during the fast. One should not let them hang over them, because then if they miss due to travel or sickness, because then they have to feed a poor person uh, each year for every day that they miss, in addition to making it up. So if they make it up before the next Ramadan comes, then they only have to make the day up. If they don't make it up, they have to make the day up, and they have to feed a poor person for each day uh, that they miss. And then this يَتَكَرَّرْ هَذَا بِمُرُورِ sinin So as the years go by and they don't make it up, they're adding another person. They don't have to make up additional days. They only miss the seven days, ten days, whatever the case might be. But they have to feed another poor person, another poor person for each day, year that goes by. The person who's al kibir al ajiz, one who's advanced in years or and or is too weak to fast, or a person that has a terminal illness that prevents them from fasting. So their illness is prevents them from fasting, and there's no hope from that illness uh, abating. So it's a terminal illness, and it prevents them from fasting. They don't have to make the day up, they just have to feed a poor person for each day that they miss. So the traveling and the, poor, the sick person who has a temporary passing illness have to make up the day fasting. And then if they don't before the next Ramadan, they have to feed a poor person. The person who has, uh, one second, advanced age or weakness or terminal illness, so each year they're going to have this illness, it's terminal, and it prevents them from fasting. They have to feed a poor person for each day they miss each Ramadan. Yes? A rule for pregnancy. Excuse me? For pregnancy? We're getting there. Tawil uh, Balik. Right. We're getting there. Okay. Al-hamil wal murdi The pregnant woman and the nursing woman. So, uh, the pregnant, so just to, to reiterate, the person advanced years and too weak to fast, or the person with a terminal illness, 
that prevents them from fasting, then that person would uh, feed a poor person. They don't have to make up the day that they missed fasting because they're incapable of fasting. That would be an undue hardship and it would be unrealistic. Uh, the pregnant woman and the nursing woman, there's two cases. If she fears during her pregnancy or her nursing that she's going to be harmed by fasting, but not the baby, then she makes the day up. If she fears the baby's going to be harmed, so the pregnancy is going to be affected, or if she fears, if she's nursing, her milk will be uh, low, then she has to make the day up and she has to feed a poor person for each day that she misses. So the pregnant woman who only fears for herself, then she has to make the day up only. Or the nursing woman who only fears for herself. The pregnant or nursing woman who fears for the baby and or herself, but just the baby, if the baby's in the mix, either alone or along with herself, she has to make the day up and she has to feed a poor person for each day that she misses. So that's the case of the pregnant or nursing woman. Now, the kafara for a person who engages in sexual intercourse, the woman had, there's no kafara. So for the people who say Islam oppresses women, here's an example where the man gets a harsher punishment than the woman. The woman, there's no punishment. The man has to, if he has in the old days, a slave, he has to liberate a slave. Uh, obviously that wouldn't be relevant today, so he would have to fast 60 consecutive days. So two consecutive months, 60 consecutive days. It might be 59. It would never be 58, because there's never two consecutive 29-day months, except for people who calculate and are unaware of that reality. Because they're short, they follow up a 29-day Sha'ban with a 29-day Ramadan. And, and the Prophet said, you never have that scenario. Anyway, that's a story for another day. So, 59 or 60 days, they would fast consecutively. If they're unable to do that, then they would have to feed 60 poor people. He would have to feed 60 poor people. And it'd be a ghalib al qut al balad, with the predominant staple of the, of the country. So, wheat or rice, potatoes. In Egypt, full mudammas. <laughs> Uh, let's leave the Egyptians alone. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trying time for Egyptians. Uh, this is the dunya. May Allah have yani, faraj li, li kulli wahid. Masriyin, Suriyin, Palestinian, Iraqiyin, Afghaniyin, il akhiri. Amrikiyin. I mean, Yawm al Qiyamah, SubhanAllah. It's going to be tough. يعني ثم ثم لا تسألون يوم إذن عن النعيم. All these ni'am we have here, we have to answer for. You know some of the misguided policies that we just blindly don't challenge. You know some of you saw dirty wars, Jeremy Scahill, it's murdering people all over the globe. We have to answer for that. يوم القيامة. The, the person is going to, the baby, right? The female, the girl buried alive. She's going to be asked, بِأَيِّ ذَمْ مِنْ كُتِلَتْ فَالنَّاسِ فِي السُّمَالِ وَالْيَمَنِ وَوَزِيرِسْتَانِ وَأَفْغَانِسْتَانِ وَفِلَسْطِينِ إِلَىٰ خِرِهِ بِأَيِّ ذَمْ مِنْ كُتِلَتْ مشكلة. So may Allah give, يعني فرج لأمريكان للعالم Allahumma yassi alayna jami'an. So those are some uh, legislative rulings. Some, some other things we can mention. Uh, 
the suppositories we should have from the yani al dukhul al ain fi manfadh al maftuh suppositories would break the fast uh, tampons would break the fast so women should be careful uh, or, or or anal suppository even for medical purpose if you have to then you just make the day up Taban, uh, yani, if it's the time of the month, is irrelevant because the, the, the cycle will break the fast anyway. But a medical suppository will break the fast. Uh, a, an injection or an IV will not break the fast because the vein is not a menfev meftu. As long as it's not for nutrition. So if one's getting an IV, or takes a shot for a nutritional boost, it will break the fast because it's equivalent to eating. But if it's for medical purposes, it wouldn't break the fast. So uh, a, a, a shot, because that isn't, the vein isn't maftur, the ayn, al anf, al fam. Eardrops will break the fast because the drop will roll into the head cavity. Eye drops wouldn't break the fast. Because the eyes aren't considered menfed meftur, they don't enter into the body cavity directly. Uh, so those are some things to, to be mindful of. Allahumma sallu rasulillah. So we'll stop there. Any questions? Yes. Uh, Nosebleed doesn't break the fast. I have seen like Islamic centers spreading up like a sahur and like iftar time. Like, for sahur they end like five minutes before and it starts they add like three or four minutes. So what's the ruling on that? So for sahur? Yeah, they end like five minutes before the sahur time. Well, one out of caution should end before then. But if, especially if they're going by the uh, uh, 18 degree fajr uh, separation as opposed to the 15 degree, and it comes that close, I wouldn't worry about it. If they're going by the 15 degree, I would tend not to, to I would tend to stop eating a little, 10, 15 minutes before that, inshallah. And then one should make sure the sun is down. A lot of the calendars are, are calculated when the sun is on the horizon. Not, that's when it's time to break the fast, not that. So one should always, wait at least the, the length of the adhan, because the adhan takes three or four minutes. In three or four minutes, the sun is going to go all the way down. So don't, don't just throw a date in your mouth, and, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, go. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now wait till the whole adhan finishes, and then break the fast, just to be safe. Unless you've, yani, you've seen the sun go down. But the calendar is usually that, or, or the newspaper, the time of sunset is that, not that. So it's not that, the sun's up, but it's that. So wait two or three minutes until you're there, inshallah. Yes? Similar to question for uh, delaying the sahur, uh, if you wake up late, like uh, 420 is the time and you wake up at 415, should you uh, skip the sahur or should you... Uh, Again, if, if you're... Uh, if you're going with the, the, the later separation, you should drink something quickly, eat a few dates or uh, whatever is available. Uh, if you're going with the, the latter time, if you're confident and you've looked out and it's still dark, then you can eat something. But once the adhan is made, that's it. Don't put anything else in your mouth. Immediately swallow whatever you have. But if you wake up right at the then you just have to tough it out that day. <laughs> Inshallah. If we were fasting three days ago, you'd really be toughing it out. Even yesterday. But alhamdulillah, you have real Ramadan. You'd be burning off a lot more than sins. <laughs> yes, Gus. Yeah. Uh, the rulings that you summarized, uh, number one, where do they really come from? 
And number two, if instead of meeting here, we were meeting in Indonesia or some, some other country far right. away, would we be hearing the same? Uh, absolutely. This is all from the Quran and from the uh, hadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. There's dalil for everything we mention. Some of the things are fatwa, like the IV is, is, is a fatwa you know, that most of the scholars give because there, there generally weren't needle injections and IVs during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So those are legal opinions of reliable scholars. But the generality of what we mention, anywhere in the Muslim Ummah, we hear that. Uh, some places you might get a different opinion on calculating the entrance of Ramadan as opposed to relying on the physical sighting of the moon, but most of what we mention is pretty standard. And maybe also in um, some countries where sunset and uh, there's not, not much difference between sunset and sunrise, like Norway or some places in Alaska, where you have very little time between... Yeah, well, that's not relevant for us, but for those countries... <clears throat> The prayers and the fasting, one option. Some, 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 they have a little night if they're not, so for example, Stockholm or Copenhagen, Copenhagen or Oslo. They have a, a, a night, but it's very short. And some people just have that one meal during that time. And then they fast the day. But uh, they have a dispensation. Uh, most scholars say either they fast in the, uh, with the people in the closest town where there's a significant Muslim population that has five distinct prayers. So most of the Scandinavians, they go with Paris as, as that sort of dabit. Or they, they fast and they base their prayers based on the time of Mecca. So either one or the other. And, or, or they just tough it out. With, but they do have that dispensation in those far northern or far southern uh, extremes. Yeah, there was a... So, um, fun, fun. so, what if you have a chronic condition such as uh, diabetes, right? And the doctor asks you, you know, it's harmful for you to... You don't fast. There's no... But then you cannot make it up, so, because, you know... It's, it's this chronic, you feed a person for every, every year you feed 30 poor pe people for each day that you miss. And that will be a chronic disease. So every year you, you feed a poor person for every day that you miss. Nah, no, Masri. Wa alaikum salam. I just ask, I ask you a question that was asked last week is why, why the woman can't fast when she is under menstruation? Why? And it uh, is to make it easy for her. I, and she, like, there are probably strong women that could fast, but rules are made for, for the generality of, of the people. So a woman is losing blood at that time. Some women, it's a heavy blood loss. And then to not be able to eat and to replenish and to drink and fruit juice and to replenish your blood supply and then like now long hot days you know this heat wave could come back it will be extreme hardship for a woman so it's ease and then after that it's tabudan this is the order that we've received from our Lord and so saman wa ta'atan but from a rational perspective just it's, it's ease like Allah, Allah wants ease for you. He doesn't want difficulty. No. Nah. For the. Did someone um, was diagnosed with some kind of chronic illness, and so they didn't fast like for ten years or whatever like that, and then all of a sudden, mashallah, they were cured from Allah and or were better. Uh, just paying during those ten years would suffice. It would suffice because at the time when the fast was due, they were suffering from an illness of that nature. And now they resume going forward based on their new condition. And again, that could be overwhelming hardship. 10, 15 years, and then, oh, you're better now. Okay, you got to make up those 10, 15 years of fasting. It will be an extreme hardship. So at the time, they, they paid the fidya and khalas. So if, uh, they didn't pay the fidya for the last Ramadan, and they found out between the two Ramadans, should they make it up or pay the fidya? They should... They should pay the fidya based on what they missed. What they missed 
and then go forward. You know? uh, yes? Question about this uh, 15 degree to 18 degree, I'm not sure if everybody is really versed about that. Which one gives more additional time, one of those degrees, and is it really personal choice? Well, the 18 degree gives a longer period. Is so, it a personal choice we're going to choose, or is it? Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. And some people say that neither one is totally accurate because, based on where you are on the earth, local conditions, uh, climatic conditions, like here you have fog usually uh, at some times of the year on the horizon in some parts of the Bay Area, for example. So those are just general guidelines. So it's just uh, when the sun coming to, because the earth as we perceive it is flat, do you say Fadger's in when the sun is 18 degrees from Sunrise or 15 degrees from sunrise. That's, that's the, the issue. So, uh, well, I guess, no, that's okay. We can, we can improvise. So if this is the horizon and the sun's coming up, do you start the Fadger at 18 degrees from the horizon? or 15 degrees from the horizon. So the 18 degrees will give you a longer period than the 15 degree. And then the sun is up after that. So uh, one more question, inshallah. Preferably sisters. Brothers asking a lot of questions. Any sisters? Any? If not, then we'll go over to the brothers. Tayyip. So, uh, We'll stop here. We said we get into some of the f philosophy of Ramadan, the hikmah, but the time is, has elapsed. And these things are important. I mean, we're, we're legal. Islam <clears throat> is a legal and moralistic tradition. Generally, Christianity is moralistic. Judaism, legalistic and moralistic. Christianity is moralistic. Islam, moralistic and, and legalistic. In other words, uh, a sign of piety is the degree to which you adhere to the law. So it's not just your moral character, which is critical, and, but it's also your adherence to the legal standard. And that's why some things we say, ta'abudan, there, there might not be a particular moral or ethical reason for something, but it's, it's a commandment from God. It doesn't involve harm, and so we do it ta'abudan. So, for example, al-ahkam al-ta'budiyya, two rakats for fajr, prayer. Uh, we pray two rakats ta'abudan. There's, there's no real overt wisdom in terms of at that time people are busy. We're generally not busy at fajr. That's why people who pray in the masjid, they come for fajr and ishat. They're busy at dhur and asr. So logically, we should have four for Fajr and two for Zuhr and Asr. Because we're at work, it will be easy, but it's two for Fajr and four for Zuhr and four for Asr. And three for Maghrib. So Ta'abudan, because that's how we received it, that's how we're being tested. It was very important to understand, as believers, we're being tested with our adherence to what our Lord has ordained for us. So Ramadan is a test for us. Praying five times a day is a test for us. In terms of, even if you strip away all of the wisdom, and there are a lot in Ramadan, we wanted to talk about them, but that would be another hour. And unfortunately I have to leave. But there are a lot of wisdoms. There's a lot of moral and ethical teachings associated with Ramadan or the prayer, etc. But there's also the fact that God said to do it, so I'm going to do it. And so that's uh, our ubudiyah, our servitude to our Lord. So we're called ibad or rahman We're servants of Allah. He's not our servant. Uh, that really doesn't make sense, so you know, I'm not going to do that. It can't, be, it can't mean what it seems to mean. You know, why not? 
God can't tell us what he wants us to do, even though it might not immediately make any sense to us. So as a servant, we say, I hear and I obey. Sami'na wa ta'ana. I hear, we hear, we obey. So that spirit should not be lost on religion people, religious people. The spirit of our age is we make ourselves God. And then we determine what the religion should be based on our sensibilities and sensitivities. And so in, in one generation, the whole religion will be gone. Because you don't like something or you're uncomfortable with something. I'm uncomfortable with something. Sister's uncomfortable with something. This brother's uncomfortable with something. It's all gone. So I'll get rid of what I don't like. You get rid of what you, I'll get rid of what I'm uncomfortable with. Better word. You get rid of what you're uncomfortable with. My sister gets rid of what she's uncomfortable with. And in one generation, the whole religion's gone. It's just, it's a patched up doll that no one will buy in the marketplace. It's so patched up. So we say, no, this is how we received it. And we accept it graciously and gratefully. We do our best. That's all that's asked for us. Obedience is proportionate with the ability to obey. You know, something I can't, I can no longer bend my toes under me when I'm in the jalsa. It causes excruciating pain. You don't have to do it if you can't do it. If it's uh, fasting, right? If I fast, I get terrible migraine headaches. It's like my head's going to explode. You don't have to fast because you don't have the ability to fast with a modicum of, of comfort. So, but we do challenge ourselves. I don't get headaches, but I get tired and languid and, uh, and hungry and thirsty. Well, that's just, you just be patient. Your food will taste that much better in another hour or two. So we challenge ourselves, and, and I mean, look, our world is going insane. If, we, if we're chasing the world, <laughs> we're in deep trouble, because this world is going insane. It's going insane. You know, and, and, and people don't even think. They say, al-junoon funoon, like insanity has become a fine art. Like people don't even realize, they think it's something wonderful, but people of discernment look and say, this is insanity. And so if we're chasing an insane world, like a sister said, I don't want to follow the, the Muslim dress standards. You want to follow the, the dress standard of the world? You know, good luck. <laughs> you know, I have to get some blinders. Because before you know it, you're going to be running around with purple hair and, you know, Close up to who knows where. That's where the world is headed. You know, no, I'll take my chances with Allah and His Messenger. And, and all of the messengers. I'll take my chance with Jesus and Moses. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll take my chance with there as opposed to Freud and Cardin and Sasson. And CC. <laughs> Couldn't resist that one. So may Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah bless everyone in Ramadan. May Allah give us an acceptable, rich fast that, that has a lot of openings. And, and may Allah give us the, the stanima to, to accept the long, hot days as a blessing and as a personal challenge. And may Allah bless us with discipline. May Allah bless us to turn to the Qur'an. You know, in coming days, or at Juma, we'll expound on some of the, the things like the, the, the Salaf and their, their approach to the Qur'an in Ramadan. It's unbelievable. Tayyip. Subhanak Allahum bihamdika shalwan la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu yadayka wal asr inna al-insana la fi khusr illa al-lazina amnu amnu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haq وتواصوا بالصبر الفات على نية الفرج لإخواننا المسلمين بشكل بمعنى معناه العام وأخواتنا المسلمات في مصر يا الأزمة شديدة 
وفي الشام كمان في فلسطين في أفغانستان في العراق في الصومال في اليمن في بحرين في 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 تونس في في الجزائر في المغرب في موريتانيا في السنغال في تركيا كذلك في إيران في كل مكان اللهم خفف عن المسلمين وفرج عنا ونسألك الحكمة ونسألك العلم النافع ونسألك الشكر ونسألك الفوز في رمضان الفاتحة